Hello and welcome to Advertisers Watching Ads. I'm not Tom Ollerton, the founder of Automated Creative. I'm Jerry Dakin from GSK, stepping into his shoes. Uh, and this is a show where brands uh, watch each other's brands and ads and discuss what's good and bad about them. But uh, as you might be able to tell, it's a bit of a special episode. Uh, it's the one after Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, and so we're going all in, all here for the Super Bowl. Uh, but without, before we get stuck into the ads, uh, let's see who we're here talking with today. So hello, everybody. I'm Kate Wall and I'm from KFC. So I've worked at KFC for about 18 months and been doing all of their advertising. Um, so my relationship with the Super Bowl, I've never stayed up late to watch it. Um, I'd say I'm a next day critic um, and love kind of watching all the ads and seeing what people have said about them. Hello there. I'm Nort's co-founder of Tiny Giant. And I would say my relationship with American football is in the early 90s, believe it or not, I had my hair cut in the style of Boomer Esiason, the quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals. The stupid things you do when you're young. Hi, my name is uh, Liam Rezend. I look after marketing communications at Hyatt Hotels. Um, I know absolutely nothing about sports, far less uh, American football, but I do like the halftime shows and the ads. So thanks for the invitation. Hi, I'm Raveline Beeston. I'm from Microsoft. Um, I have never watched Super Bowl. I do like some sports, but Super Bowl's never been up there. Also, I have two young children. So staying up till half past 11 at any point is a challenge generally in my life. Um, but I always like to catch up with the ads, not all of them, but, you know, there's always like those one or two iconic ads that everybody talks about the next day. And I love just kind of delving into that and seeing what they're about. So thanks for having me on today. Brilliant. Great to have you. Yeah, I'm not a massive sports fan myself, but if I, <laughs> ground, I, can, I can reveal that I'm all in for any kind of, like, this is my London 2012 jumper anything where you can go a bit mad and a bit branded and, and like Liam said I'm definitely here for the ads and the halftime show I did I stayed up and watched the first half I kind of followed the score but honestly I don't really understand the sport still but anyway we're here for the ads uh Rav you said you love you know you love you love following anything big and iconic was there anything that particularly stood out for you this year yeah probably the opposite actually which is <laughs> just well just seeing and it was really interesting just seeing a load of newbies in there that you wouldn't have you know expected to see and you know you could read that, that a lot of the big soda brands that would typically be there like your coca colas and pepsis decided to sit it out this year and so i really enjoyed seeing you know the likes of macari and doordash and reddit and fiverr and seeing how a they found the budget to do it firstly, but then you see some of the creative stuff that the likes of Reddit did to not have to spend so much on it, but still be effective um, and just see what they did with it. And I thought it had kind of, you know, mixed results. Um, I loved what Fiverr did, but you know, when I looked at what Macari did, I was like, oh, you know, really, could you not have been a little bit more creative with the amount of money that must've cost you for that spot? Um, so yeah, it was like the opposite for me. I, I actually enjoyed, seeing the newbies a lot more than probably the the bigger brands brilliant not i think it's probably fair that the biggest actual american football fan here was it was it a good game was that was the match itself actually any good uh i i only watched to be honest the jay the last five nights i've been getting up in the middle of the night to watch england play cricket in india <laughs> to be honest. that's been more of a pro but i did Your catch loyalties a are torn as games go, I'm not. I used to be a massive American football fan, and sort of just fell out of love with it. But as games go, it was quite dreary because there was no jeopardy in the result, so to speak. It was a bit of a. It was basically a sort of Tom Brady celebration, really, yeah. of his life. And, and then for the ads, then what what stood out for me from the ads then? Well, this is kind of interesting for me, Joe, because I've normally year on year I get in an absolute tizzy in a state about the Super Bowls and try and find them all out weeks and weeks before to get that lit, so I don't get the sense of FOMO. But because I knew we were doing this, I've I've come to them really late. So it was interesting that I was more reading about the ads and hearing about some of these things about there were new new brands and businesses who were going to do it. So it's 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 been quite refreshing not to know very much in advance and. The vibe I got was like it was a bit underwhelming the ads this year. But to be honest, that which I've seen, I've really enjoyed. Kate nodding along there. Was there anything that in your in your catching up on it? Is there anything that you've really loved seeing? How do you how do you feel it all landed? I mean, the first thing I'd say is fair play to anyone who chucked their hat into this this year. Like the year we've all had. You imagine you start planning this time last year when 
COVID wasn't even a thing, right? So I kind of want to give them all kudos for trying. Um, I also think like you've got to go, got to go big or go home on these things. And I feel like I respect like the cokes and the people of like not putting their hat in and, and dipping out because if you haven't got a great idea and you've got a question mark on the execution, whether you can shoot it, probably duck out because it's better than not to be involved than to have um, some critics on you, right? So I think for me, like love Cheetos. Um, I also like Rav really appreciate some of the young kind of startup guys getting involved and doing it in a really creative way. There is there is a kind of a, a difficult question this year, wasn't there? With with COVID, like, do we did we really want to see like loads of like sad and emotional stuff? But at the same time, unless you go extreme escapism, you know, it's it's risky territory showing people coming together and breaking COVID regulations and things like that. So it was, yeah, weird territory. Liam, really what... hard tonally to get that right as well, because it's changed. The tone changes every month in the world right now. And yeah. you're producing this six months in advance. So it's a, a massive creative challenge as well. Yeah, and it's hard. You know, we didn't know where we'd be with vaccines and optimism or, any, or anything like that, or even US presidents and other things that might have shaped the mood of the nation. Liam, what about you? What did you, what did you like? Yeah, I think for me, I was really looking to see how brands, you know, struck that struck that balance between escapism and not wanting to, <laughs> you know, for us to sit down and watch these, you know, very sort of somber ads, but also uh, be funny enough, but then not too funny that it sort of seems out of um, out of tune. Um, Definitely some favorites. Um, I think the Alexa ad was, was definitely a, a favorite for me. It's just flawless, isn't it? We think so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I literally couldn't imagine a more beautiful vessel for Alexa to be inside. Alexa, how many tablespoons are in a cup? There are 16 tablespoons in a cup. Babe, food just got here. Why are you cooking? Who's that? Alexa, turn on the sprinklers. Honey, I already ran the sprinklers. Things are getting way too wet around here. Alexa, dim the lights. But I'll save you Alexa, lights up. Alexa, lights up. Add bath oils to my shopping list. Alexa, no, don't do that. Read my audiobook. I was in his hands. I was being changed. that I was also kissing him. Honey, other people have to use the bathroom around here too. Um, I also thought it was interesting to see what brands reflected, you know, the times that we were in. Uh, there was, a, there was a, a smaller brand indeed, which is the recruitment, um, the recruitment uh, company, you know, that really, uh, it was an inspiring ad, I think, particularly where the US are seeing, um, you know, some of the highest unemployment rates uh, as well. Uh, in 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 the country, so yeah, I think it, it, it was it was interesting to see, but I think I must agree with Nords. Uh, I don't know how, I don't know how many of these um, of these ads are going to make global best Super Bowl ads uh, in the future. Yeah, it maybe feels like there wasn't a the most vintage of years in terms of like absolute standout, but you know, as we've, as we've said, some some really challenging stuff. I think. Rav, you mentioned, didn't you, the Reddit ads? For anyone who hasn't seen us, tell, tell us what the Reddit was like. It, give us, in five seconds, describe the Reddit ad. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> Basically taking everything that happened with GameStop and saying, look at the difference we can make when we all come together. Um, and I thought it was really, really clever. And obviously it's been reposted. And so it's not just the five second ad that it, it was that night, but I'm sure that kind of played into their objective. Um, what I love about ads is when they can take something that is kind of zeitgeist or something that the vast majority of people will find relevance to and be humorous about it in a way that isn't always like obvious. And I think, but there was a really important message there as well. And if I you know, that's why I like the Reddit ad is secondly why probably the Fiverr ad was my other favorite ad. Looks good, guys. Success. It's often right place, right time. When opportunity knocks at your car gate, a garage door, you roll that puppy up. 
Fiverr gets that. From graphic design to web development. Or even a PR expert for things like, I don't know, booking a press conference. to get you where you want to be. Ma, we found a fifth season! <sighs> yeah! Yeah! Is this a lobby? This is not a hotel. I love what they did, right? They took something which was completely bonkers <laughs> and, and somehow weaved it into a story for a, for a brand and then told the story in a funny way, but not in a way that kind of was distastefully funny. Like both for me had this kind of undertone of humor, which was which was just fun. And I think that's really clever when you can do that with advertising. And if you can then find a spot like this to put it in. Um, I, yeah. It, yeah. Like, I it. think the Reddit was the epitome of the fact that Super Bowl ad isn't just about the spot. Because if you, if you didn't see it, it was like literally a five second like advert on screen that they ran in some cities, but you know, we're here to talk about it. I think the five one, I love the five one. Uh, it kind of plays on one of my favorite cultural moments of last year, which was the famous Four Seasons press conference. So there's a lot going on there. So yeah, there's a the, the famous Trump press conference that accidentally happened at the Four Seasons Garden Centre. Five, if you don't know, is kind of a, hopefully, you know, at the end of the advert, it's a platform for connecting with freelancers. They were a bit of a startup over the last few years, but they're, you know, they're going big, they're getting big credibility with this. Other folks, what did you, what did you think of that one? Yeah, just add one thing though, which I didn't realize until I read about it afterwards, which is that lady is the CEO of Four Seasons Garden and Landscaping. Oh, wow. She is the actual CEO of that company, which I, I just wow. thought was absolutely brilliant. I, you know, anyway, I'll stop there. <laughs> Liam, what about you? Did you like that one? Yeah, I mean, I think it was it was fun. I think it was, you know, it was tongue in cheek and, you know, it played on, you know, what all Americans, I think, had, are sort of, uh, it, it was very relatable in terms of understanding, but I thought it was just okay. I mean, I didn't think it was, it was one of the standout ads for me, um, but yeah, I think it was fun. Nothing, nothing too high. It's a high production values and timely, but yeah, but in probably in a year's time, it will stop to make much sense. Yeah. But <laughs> Kate, what do What's you the think? thing I would say, would oh, say sorry to say, what I will say, surely the ultimate iteration of a, a Fiverr ad on the Super Bowl would be that everybody involved would have been hired on Fiverr, wouldn't it? Yeah. I wanted to know that. I didn't do any research. Did anyone look it up? Were they? Probably not. <laughs> I think it's a great point, not. So I think I think what I like about it is they've taken kind of you know step beyond just a service to try and create that kind of storytelling world of creativity and imagination and and almost like a one stop shop for everything you could need in that weird weird world. So. I thought it was good. Like, I don't think I'd remember it next week, to be honest. Yeah, very tight. I, I think of five as like a sort of super cheap budget. You want to buy something really cheap, you get a logo made or something literally for a fiver. And they're obviously trying to do a massive brand elevation piece there. And, you know, it's it's the place to do it. Okay, so Liam, you, I think you mentioned earlier the Amazon Alexa ad. If, if there was going to be a sort of a, a glossy winner, a man down, a glossy winner of the night that was, was up there, what did you like about the Alexa ad? Uh, besides Michael B. Jordan, or just we're talking about the, the ad there's more, Surely there's more to it than me. <laughs> was there? No, uh, I think it was, you know, I think it was, uh, it, I think what was interesting looking at all of, the, or many of the, of, the, of the ads was, I don't know if anyone else felt, it was quite unnerving seeing lots of people together. And I think um, just because of, you know, the year that we've had. So what I loved about some ads like the, like the Alexa ad is the more intimate, you know, smaller, two, three people within, within the adverts. I felt, you know, it was just more in tone with, with how people are, are feeling. Some of the other ads where, you know, you had big mega productions with like thousands of people. It's like, ah, what about COVID kind of thing? So uh, I, I think that was just sort of in the frame as well. But Again, I think that, you know, uh, Michael, G. Bo Michael B. Jordan was, you know, he was rated People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive in 2020. Um, you know, I love the way that they played um, onto the, you know, his upcoming movie, the Tom Clancy movie as well. Um, and, you know, it was just very, very fun. And when we think about, uh, you know, couples that are uh, uh, together in lockdown, you know, I think that 
uh, dynamic uh, just between the the couple that was featured in the um, that was featured in in the ad. It was it was I think it was it was fun. It was you know it was it wasn't tone deaf. Um, yeah, I, I think it was it was one of the winners uh, for for me. So Alexa, I'm with you, Liam. That was a brilliant ad, and the reason I thought it was so good was. Like we've seen Alexa ads for the last five years, right? The functionality of like turn my lights on or do this. And I just thought they've like elevated it mm. uh, by the use of like a very sexy guy, but also it's just like to get that intimacy between technology and just life. Um, and it's just very entertaining, right? Like the, the role of, of them both in the bath and everything. So I thought it was really good. And there still is a kind of a good product message in there. At the end of the day, there's yeah. still scenes where they're, Using Still the using the yeah. functionality of yeah. Alexa, and yeah. even like the little touches around, like you know the the, the blue pulse in his eyes, like they're just. A few I, nice know, I only noticed it for the first time there. Yeah. Yeah. Good use of distinctive assets there <laughs> in his eyes. So, yeah. Rav, were you a fan? I loved it. I, I I was I was just completely engrossed when I watched that yesterday, um, and actually all of the above from what Liam and Kate have already said. But I, A, it was nice to see Alexa depicted as a man. In mm. the past, I've only ever heard it as a woman's voice. And so it kind of gave me a sense of, you know what, Alexa can be whatever you want Alexa to be. And I really liked that feeling. Like, actually, it's what I, I want it to be and it's what she wants it to be. And so I loved that aspect of the ad and, and the way that they, uh, you know, kind of presented the product. And then there's this something about the intensity between <laughs> Michael and the lady that is just captivating. And it's as if everything else is just going on. Life is going on. And the whole thing is about these two people. And it was nice, back to Liam's point, seeing that kind of connection between people, regardless of what the context is. Because right now you you just don't, you know, it's it everything just feels so kind of blur. Um, and it was is a bit it, of escapism, like you said. Is it overselling it, though? Because, you know, I've had Alexa for a while and I'm not sure my relationship is, is quite as close. I mean, it's an advert, but... Are you yeah. saying I should cancel my order for my Alexa that I do? <laughs> you, might, you might be disappointed, I think, Liam, but, you know. Well, has, is Michael B. Jordan, has he got his voiceover on there? I mean, that's, they should be doing that, right? Changing her voice. Proper integrated that would be a good campaign. <laughs> yeah. But Jerry, I think it's a really interesting point you bring up about your relationship with Alexa. So we we are also very much an Alexa household. Um, but about a year ago, my son, who's who was seven at the time, for his birthday present, asked to have an Alexa in his room. And so that's, that's what we got him. His relationship with Alexa is different to they my chat. I think my they chat. Like he thinks he thinks of it nothing unnatural to kind of just go. Hey Alexa, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? Oh, is it? Should we go to the park or not go to the park? Yeah. I would think that's weird. I wouldn't yeah. say that to Alexa. I use Alexa as a very factual, I need an answer, give me the answer, we're done. But set, the kitchen, set the kitchen time is about as close as I get to with mine. <laughs> Add something to my shopping list, but yeah. he doesn't. So I do wonder whether that's more of a generational thing that we, yeah. you know, there's a point at which we see it as a very transactional piece of technology. But actually, for those that have grown up with it, it's a lot more than that. Um, so yeah, I thought that was interesting. Yes, yeah, it's, it's that it's a notable difference. Like people who say thank you and like you know have a bit more of a chat with it. You you hinted at another thing a second ago, Rav, which is that um, it, well, it broke a bit of a stereotype uh, in terms of yeah Alexa being a man or whatever uh, looming over the Super Bowl this year. You, you know, it, it didn't happen in a vacuum. It happened the year after Black Lives Matter and Amer American election. I mean, you know, that advert was not a political statement or anything but it had very positive you know inclusive casting and obviously he is a black man but so is the family involved I think throughout the whole evening um certainly from a race perspective I think there were some positive steps just in terms of like you know really good not necessarily woke worthy adverts but like casual positive representation it, it struck me I don't from a an LGBT perspective I'm passionate about in mind I don't think it, that was heavily done but maybe you know certainly from a race perspective it was it was good to, from my perspective it felt like we were getting to a better balance and a, a gender perspective I think PNG had a good um thing about balancing chores and stuff did did you guys get that sense that you know without being for me it wasn't too woke but it was you know positive I, mean, I don't think woke's a bad thing either it wasn't too um you know it was nicely representative in many ways I um I was gonna say that I I um I I, I like you um Jerry 
was looking for some sort of LGBT representation in the, you know, plethora of ads that were being offered to us. I think particularly as, you know, the, you know, the, the idea of diversity in sports, particularly LGBT diversity in sports is something that, you know, has been on the top of the LGBT agenda for, you know, a very, very long time. So I thought that was lacking in, in, in quite, in, in all of the adverts. Um, even the, you know, the, the Bay commercial, the, um, I forget the name, the um, I, I, Iser House, um, uh, Iser House, the, I, I forget, it, Let's Grab a Bay, that commercial, okay. which I thought was, uh, which was very, very, very strong as well. You know, there were multiple different people, multiple different types of people, makeups that makes up of people, but n nothing again that struck uh, me as, you know, anyone being representative of the LGBT community. So I thought that was probably a miss, but, but I think, on that point, one thing that I thought was interesting when we talk about the changing of the times is I was reading an article about Mila Kunis, uh, who was in the Cheetos commercial, and she said that every single Super Bowl, Super Bowl promotion, uh, proposal that she received in the past, there was an expectation for her to be scantily dressed. Um, and the fact that this was one of the first ones where, um, where that was not an expectation and that was not in the brief, uh, which is one of the reasons why it kind of attracted her and just because it was fun and she wanted to get away from her kids with her husband. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I thought, you know, I think it is reflective of, you know, the, you know the, that the times are changing and, and how and representation in advertising and in marketing is, is even more important and, and, and also people are more aware and more attuned uh, and, cute and sort of, uh, you know, acutely aware of, of uh, representation in advertising. Kate, from what you, from what you saw, do you, do you think we've moved positively forwards in that direction? Yeah, I thought it was a big step forward. And that, look, I didn't watch all 50 ads, <laughs> but the ones I did, I just thought were done really authentically and weren't trying too yeah. hard. And I think mm. the last few years, a few have stuck out for the wrong reasons yeah. to, you know, so I didn't think we had that this year, which I think is a great thing. But I was I was shocked that no one went down, you know, probably more focused on this topic because of, of the year we've had with Black Lives Matters. Mm. Yeah, there weren't as many sort of politically united. I think Ford had a sort of fairly slightly generic health workers -y thing. I think Jeep had a kind of find the middle yeah. ground piece. They did re reunited yeah. states, didn't they? Yeah. There was a Trying. weather there's a weather brand as well that did something which is kind of quite patriotic and Okay. Yeah. Uh, but like we touched on the start, it was it was tricky because I mean at the same time if every single ad break had been kind of super worthy, super like, you know, it's it's meant to be a, a good bit of escapism. Speaking of which I think the Cheetos advert is definitely worth uh throwing up there uh let's give uh cheetos and Mila kunis's slightly bonkers performance a, a, a quick watch did you steal my cheetos again just tell him it wasn't you but i caught you at the counter it wasn't me saw you snacking on the sofa it wasn't me you even had him in the shower it wasn't me I even caught you on camera! You don't want to grunt it access to your snacks. Don't talk surprised that she sleep behind your back. You gotta keep tabs before she emptied up bag. Let's review the situation. Orange fingers, red flag. To keep you on stash, you gotta hide it better. If she asks where they are, you say forget her. Never admit to a word. And please don't upset her. And if she keep on snacking, I guess you will let her. Well, did you? Wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the first time that's ever worked. New Cheetos Crunch Pop Mix. Yeah, it, make, it makes me laugh even watching it for about the third third time. It's it's a good one. Ralph, do you like that one? Do you know what? I didn't. Ah. <laughs> Tell us why not. I found it a little bit, um, like, over the top trying to be funny. And, um, yeah, I didn't love it. I didn't like the acting. I thought... Shaggy, I love Shaggy, and the my favorite part of it is when he says that bit at the end. You know, the that's never worked before. Last time it's worked. That, that, that I, yeah, I, the punchline was the best for me. I don't know. The rest kind of felt a little bit cobbled together and a bit. It just didn't. It didn't come together for me. Like it didn't make me want to go and buy Cheetos. That's hey, I think you're adjudicating now. We've got we've got one one love, one less love. Where where are you? On yeah, that sort of so. Thing? 
let me say, I don't think it's up there with Just Eating Snoop Dogg. I thought that production value was way better. But what I really liked about that Cheetos one is just like, the whole thing was a bit of a guilty pleasure from the snack to Shaggy to <laughs> quite low production value kind of made it in a way for me. And I just don't know, like it just tapped into a few old memory structures of like, remember that song being a great part of my life. And then was it just like the little fingerprints everywhere? Like those product truth, like that's what happens when you eat Cheetos, right? That that orange stuff gets everywhere. So I just thought it's quite lighthearted. I thought what was like for me, what was like the 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 punchline at the end is that it's for their new thing called Pop Mix, which I thought was, you know, which was which was fun. And I think that that really oh. spoke to, to what yeah, they that. That's a so, twist I missed as well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it was a uh, Cheetos pop uh, popcorn and 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 they and they mm. crunch or something like that. Um, and it's this this new brand and you know just seeing like the, the the branding come up with like Cheetos pop mix. You know after you just sort of like heard a pop mix of Shaggy and uh, Ashton Kutcher horribly singing uh, his version of the song. I thought it was uh, I thought it was fun. I can imagine being in the agency review like first edit. <laughs> when the agency is like, look, you've got 50 pack shots in the ad. You don't need the end frame. The client being like, we still need the end frame. <laughs> like, it's so classic slap on the end, wasn't it? The whole advert is just you're literally a product shot. But it's yeah. like... um, I, there was something, yeah, it, I don't think it's going to go down in history as a classic, but it kind of it knew what it was and it did it well. You've got like a, you know, if you buy like a minute slot or something, you've got to stand out, be memorable cut through I mean yeah as, as you've hinted at it, I mean, leverage like celebrities and nostalgia and music and a lot of that but you know it, if you were sort of half paying attention you, you know when that started you'd have been like what oh okay and it's the couple their dynamic and things like that as well but there was there was a lot of nostalgia a lot of celebrities I think people were more tempted to kind of go to that slightly safer territory you know you know if you've got like a big a-list celebrity You've got that nostalgia. People are going to kind of remember it. Well, I'll tell you what, you're never going to go wrong. Shaggy's always going to make a buck out of that song, is he, for the next thousand years. <laughs> for Some will always wheel it out, won't they, for, for something or else. Um, it's quite weird, really, because from a sort of, uh, as someone who's written television ads, from a sort of execution standpoint, there's not much I like about it, but hold, bear with me, hold with it. There's not much I like about it. It's like one of those gigs, I reckon, where they had them on set for literally about 30 minutes. That's all they had with them. And they just basically knocked it out fast. It's so, like, awkward. But what I will say is that if you look at the, it's that classic thing, isn't it, that what you might not like creatively, the world absolutely adores. And so it sort of does its job in a way. But if you look at the sentiment online, it's not like, oh, the aesthetics of this are terrible. It couldn't just be. It's actually people saying, it's wonderful. We love it. Let's have a sequel, Cheeto. <laughs> what happens next? There you, yeah, there you go. Exactly. Sometimes the best, the best craft, the best planning in the world, and people just want to see a celebrity couple with low production values. <laughs> So what is yeah, so has rated it as like the number one from the night or something like that. Really? So, yeah. Well, I, I have a personal favorite, um, which we can look at. So uh and you know the Super Bowl spots famously cost about five and a half million dollars. And so my favorite is a company that didn't just buy one, I think they bought four. It was the Paramount Plus, which is kind mm. of like a Netflix-like service over in the US. Uh, they bought like three or four, it was kind of telling a story of these people climbing a mountain. Um it ticks a lot of those, but it's a lot of like nostalgia characters you already know. I mean, for the most part, it was a good advert just because like I liked a lot of the characters in it from different TV shows and things. But it does all climax together in a quite nicely done and quite bonkers summit thing. What did you, what did you guys think of that? Jerry, can yeah. I just say it feels like you're living on that mountain. It's, in your just, it's just my mind. Like, it's just you, isn't it? <laughs> on that mountain. I can see why it was your favourite, like all of those characters and stuff um but i mean like you, you know when i said go hard or go home they went hard like <laughs> absolutely everyone they could pull out they pulled out so i liked it yeah i like i like the whole peak thing you know because i always look at that symbol and think why do they have that weird mm. mountain there what, what made them come <laughs> with that and so it's almost like they took something which could feel you know arbitrary and they turned it into a real piece for their new branding so i quite i, quite, I think that's clever i did like it I like and then the, the characters I know as well. The, the clever hook at the end, you know, a mountain of, a mountain of entertainment. I thought that was, uh, <laughs> I thought that was great. Noughts, what did you think of the uh, the bonkers well, mountain? 
um, again, I suppose even even featuring James Corden, that couldn't spoil it, could it? <laughs> amazing, amazing. Um, what I thought, and it's a theme across these. Again, it's, it was a bit janky in places, wasn't it? I'd say there was a, there was a sort of lack of eye for detail in a way, but in but in a sort of pleasurable way, because it was like sort of nuts switching between kind of different stylistic formats, and it all seemed to done in a hurry. And I think there's a real theme about the shit. Not unsurprisingly, that you know there wasn't that there hasn't been that opportunity for a lot of these um, commercials, these spots to have the real sort of time and craft. And I think the ones that have tried have kind of embraced that, like you say, like the. Um, the kind of red at the five of this in a way and there's definitely a little bit more escapism in the theme of these ads isn't there doing crazy stuff which you don't really need to explain it just but, is yeah because I think they clearly polished, spent isn't it yeah they clearly spent a lot of money on it so it wasn't that like they didn't have the budget to do it well they almost sort of deliberately just didn't make it yeah so they needed to, they wanted to deliver we'd like to think they wanted to literally have little sort of rough things and continuity fails and stuff like that. It's almost part of this sort of in joke, maybe. I don't know, but it was fun. Well, we're, we're coming towards the end of our Super Bowl journey here. There was one little back and forward between two advertisers I quite like, and I think Kate, you mentioned you were in, uh, a big fan of. So uh, there was a GM advert. Actually, it was the their premiere of their new GM logo. GM usually advertises all its its sub brands, uh, and they had with Will Ferrell. Uh, going off to Norway. Did you know that Norway sells way more electric cars per capita than the US? Norway. <laughs> well, I won't stand for it. Come on. Oh, never mind. With GM's new Ultium battery, we're gonna crush those losers. Crush them! Let's go, America. Keenan, Norway's out EVing us. Wait, what's this? Oh, it's my daughter's birthday. She's really a pirate. I don't lately. care. Grab an EV, meet me in Norway. Okay, can I say goodbye to my family? Nope. All right. Ah! <clears throat> Aquafina, sorry to disturb you, but Norway's beating us at EVs. Nuh uh. Uh huh. Nuh uh. Uh huh. Meet me there in an hour. Can I ride with you? No! GM's Ultium battery is made for all types of vehicles, so soon everyone can drive an EV. Oh! Why don't we all just go together? No one will, he's probably flying private. Hey, Norway, listen up, you fish loving! Oh, this place is adorable. Damn it. Where are you guys? We're in Finland, where are you? I'm in Norway. Norway? You're in Sweden. Damn it. What do people think about that one? It was, you know, it was one of the most talked about ones. Basically, the story is, yeah, Norway has the highest number of EVs in the world. So, you know, America wants to catch up. He's off to, well, he's basically off to beat Norway up to, to I don't know. Didn't quite. Crush. <laughs> Liam, did you like it? Uh, yeah, I liked it. I, I um, you know, I, I think it was, it was quite, um, it was quite interesting at the end that just sort of plays, played up that stereotype. I mean, I don't know if this offends anyone, but played up the stereotype of Americans, you know, where they're like, oh, I'm in Finland. And he's like, I'm in Norway. And then someone else is like, no, 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 you're in Sweden. Um, and I thought that was uh, that was just like a nice little uh, end to it. But yeah, I, I don't think, again, I, it's one of those ads that I think, you know, people enjoyed it. I think, you know, they had a bit of talkability at, at the end, but I'm not sure how long it's going to be etched in our memories either. Rav, did you like the journey to Norway? I did actually. I think I I enjoyed the Audi response ones more because I just thought they were fun and tongue in cheek. Although I don't know how I felt about it, the third one where the guy's actually eating that fish and they go into quite graphic detail when he bites off the head of the fish, and I thought that was a bit weird. Um, but on the GM one, I love Will Ferrell. I love Keenan, and I mm. love so I and Aquafina. Like I love the the kind of random selection of three people that they just pulled in to go together so I, I I really liked all of that um and so I thought it was funny I enjoyed it, it again it's probably not something that I would have stood there and gone like this is amazing but I really enjoyed watching it and I thought it was fun but I thought it was it wouldn't have been as funny if there hadn't been a response to it that's kind of the thing that I loved about it yeah is that there was this kind of back and forth friendly 
interesting between two massive brands. Um, I thought it was great. America is coming for us. No way, no way. It's the best country in the universe. How can you hate this? How can you hate us? Me. You want to punch us in the face? You want to do this to us? To me? To the world? We're trying to save the world. Save it. So yeah, Kate, what did you think about that? And it blows my mind slightly because presumably they made that in like the week since GM first. Yeah, that's what I, I, I'm with Rav, right? I think Audi have come out on top on that one just because mm -hmm. they must have been so reactive and production value was really, really high. Um, and I just love it when um, brands and advertisers can just react a little bit more in the moment in terms of tone. And that end line of don't hate, imitate is just so much stronger. And you remember it and it cuts through. Um, and I think KFC have done a bit of that this year and, it's, and it just pays off so much more. You don't need the weight of media because the creative's so sharp. So it's I like, and I also like how they did three or four. I mean, yeah. totally unnecessary, but why not, right? It is, yeah, it's been big Game of Thrones star, very high production values. I get, in a way, it's a simple shoot though, isn't it? It's a, it's a camera driving down a road, but yeah, it's, it's phenomenal to have turned it around. It's, it's kind of the, all oh, this back here, the Oreo Super Bowl moment, but like times a hundred, you know, not just a, here's a clever tweet, but here's a 60 second advert we pulled out the bag. Noughts, did you like GM, Audi? Who do you think came out on top of that? Uh, I do. I tell you what, Joe. I do love. Uh, I do love a rhyming tagline. <laughs> all, all the science says they stick in your head, so that's a winner. The fact that they've done that as a response fast is amazing. Go, so to me, yeah, that's on top. The the um, the Will Ferrell one. It was just basically, wasn't it? And it was. It was some nice lines in it. It's Will Ferrell on autopilot as he's been since Blades of Glory. Probably, and he's always going to deliver it because he knows how to deliver a funny light. I'm kind of interested in his obsession with like ice with the sort of uh, Nordic countries because didn't he do that Eurovision movie? He did the Iceland Eurovision? He spent yeah, a lot of time. It, yeah. He spent a lot of time in the sort of in those kind of parts of the world, in the scandals. Um, no, I think yeah, if if someone's come back with a response as it would appear, that's got to be a win for me, isn't it? Again, as the the, the reactive nature to somebody else. I didn't really say watching it on such a small device as this. I'm not sure I entirely understood it, but maybe that's just the fact that I'm on a micro screen right now. Right, we're, we're coming to the end of our Super Bowl journey. So in the actual game, the Kansas Chiefs were beaten by someone Buccaneers. Is that right? Tampa Buccaneers. Tampa Buccaneers. Tampa Buccaneers. Tampa oh, yeah, hosting it for the first time. So you guys, who was your Super Bowl winner? In uh, uh, a, a sentence or two, I'd like to understand from you guys, who, which which brand do you think came out on top of the Super Bowl and and why or you know which did you love the most and why and I'm going to start with Rav. I was really hoping you were going to start with somebody else um oh gosh uh who's my favorite I'm gonna say Reddit. Reddit nice five second ad stealing the Super Bowl noughts. I, I, I'm with Rav I'm going with Reddit too though I would have a, uh, a special prize to I think it was Rocket Mortgages you just did a really nicely crafted, well-written comedy ad. Really well executed. But I think Reddit had that sort of surprise element, which I'm always big on. Yeah. Liam? Um, we didn't really touch on it, but I did like the Indeed commercial, again, just reflecting, uh, you know, the current situation that's happening in the US. And then, you know, like notes, I think special mention to the um, light dimming scene in the Alexa ad. <laughs> and Kate? I'm going to go Audi because I think they took all the boxes um, and so that takes it for me. But huge shout out to Reddit because the last few weeks, like they've just absolutely nailed it, haven't they? A, yeah, clever media buy for a brand that almost certainly didn't have enough money to buy a Super Bowl ad, but has become yeah. such a topic of conversation they had to do something. 
I said it already. I mean, I love the Paramount one, not just that summit, summit one, but the, this journey along the way. And if you watch the extended versions of even greater Crips, and we were saying earlier, you know, you struggle for LGBT inclusivity, but if you, you blink and you miss it, but RuPaul is in there. <laughs> just like standing. Less, less than a second on screen, but we'll take it. Brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for being a part of this. Thanks for being a part of the episode of Advertisers Watch Ads, sponsored by the Conscious Advertising Network. Uh, and we'll see the rest of you at home soon. Mm -hmm.